Sunny's just literally her name. She's bright, she's beautiful, very loving person. I just drove immediately over to where she was at. And as soon as I saw her, I saw tons of blood in the water. Mm -hmm. And I just, sorry, I tried to act really fast and I jumped into the water. And immediately we was yelling for the people to call 911 because I knew it was bad. And then I reached her. I just don't know how I can forgive myself. This is the Lost Child Podcast, where we delve into the topic of losing a child. These are real stories from real people sharing some of their darkest moments with us and their journey from that fateful experience. If you're grieving, I hope that you find hope and healing in these stories and you can relate to some of them. If you're supporting someone that's grieving, hopefully you can gain insight into what they're thinking and feeling. As a reminder, our guests are sharing some of their most guarded and precious spiritual and emotional experiences with us. Please keep that in mind when making comments on the video or the podcast. We have a guest with us here today, and she's going to share a little bit about her story. Let's dive into the podcast. Are you ready? It's okay. Or is that all over, B? <laughs> okay, so Camille, thanks yeah. for being here and, and inviting me to be part of this. I really feel um, that it's an honor that you trust me enough to have this conversation with. And hopefully I'll be able to do it justice and we'll be able to um, have questions that uh, are meaningful, that we can help other people as they um, are going through the same experience that you are. So before we get started, though, I want to ask you, what made you decide to be interviewed? Because we're only five and a half months yeah. since Sunny passed away. So I um, think that it's very brave of you. And I just want to know why you decided to do it. Um, so, yeah, definitely some hesitancy because it hasn't been a ton of time. Um, it's actually just four days shy mm -hmm. of being six months. And I really didn't want to, but I feel like there's lots of things in my life that I don't necessarily want to do, but I do it because I feel like I need to do it. Um, for example, I didn't want to go back to MP school. Mm -hmm. I never wanted to be an MP, yet oh. I'm going to be an MP here in the end of October of this year. Um, so this is just one of those things that is difficult and... Um, I just really felt like it's something that I needed to do. Maybe maybe it's to help myself. Maybe it's to help other viewers that are um, raw in the experience of losing a child and really get those feelings out there. Because, yes, we've interviewed other people that have lost children. Um, but And they've shared their experiences and their feelings. But I feel like since maybe it's been so, so long for some of them, maybe it's hard to really right. remember everything. And maybe because you're so new in this, somebody else that's so new in it can be yeah. more, can relate more to that mm -hmm. than somebody that's kind of, you know, have that distance of years in between. Yeah. Um, so speaking of NP school that you didn't want to do, mm -hmm. I'm so proud of you for continuing on. Um, I think most people would have stopped, but you had, I just remember you had that really big test that you had to take and, I just am so proud of you that you persevered and you pushed through it because I don't think that's like a superhuman strength that I don't think most people can do that. So you're amazing. You just made me like so amazed and proud of what you were doing because I know it was so hard for you, but you had prepared for it. Mm -hmm. So good for you. And it's almost over. Yeah. Yeah. So that's amazing. Um, so in this conversation, because we know it's going to be a very tender conversation, uh, I, if there's anything that we talk about or I ask you and you just feel like I don't want to talk about that or I can't talk about that, you not just say pass Okay. and we'll just move on to the next thing. And then we, it won't have to be, you know, me waiting for a response from you or something <laughs> like that. Just, just say pass and I'll just know, okay, we're going to just okay. move on. Okay. So, um, let's just talk about Sunny for a second. Tell yeah. me about Sunny and what her personality was like and, her yeah. hobbies and all that kind of stuff. Give us a little intro to Sunny. Yeah. So um, Sunny's just literally her name. Like I've said before, um, she's bright. She's beautiful. She's very selfless, kind, um, 
very loving person. She would always want to do whatever she could to make other people feel loved. I don't even know if she necessarily realized that that's what she was doing because she was so young. Um, but she just, that was her, that was just her. She loved to make other people feel loved. And I know that she accomplished that every day with at least one person. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause I've had multiple people tell me um, how special she is. Um, she loved to do anything. She was the fearless, most fearless out of all three of my kids. And she's the girl. Mm -hmm. (laughs) She would do flips on the trampoline. She would do flips into the pool. Um, she would, uh, pretty much do whatever, uh, she set her mind to, she would do it. And she loved cooking and baking with me in the kitchen. She had her own little apron and chef's hat that she would like to wear. And, she would help me mix things up and roll cookies into um, like little balls to put on the sheet. Mm-hmm. And um, she loved to draw and make crafts. And um, she would give those to people most of yeah. the time. Uh, she would make cards and always steal my cards to give to people and make them. And um, just a very, very sweet sweet person. And she did, she did love to be in the water. She loved to go to the beach and play in the sand. And she loved to be at the lake and swim around and, um, do things behind the boat. And, um, she loved playing with her brothers, Dieter and Tucker. She would play with them all together or individually and do Legos with Tucker or, um, play house or like doggy with Dieter Mm -hmm. and she was just like a little mom and um and she was the middle child yeah so was she a peacemaker as well um I think probably for the most part I mean she had her moments where she was the one that was causing problems Mm -hmm. but um she always was concerned about other people and um there we have many pictures of her having her arm around Dieter, holding his hand and being concerned for him. Um, so she's just a really sweet and special person. Was she a girly girl or was she oh, more yeah. of a tomboy? Definitely a girly girl. Not like me at all. <laughs> <laughs> I remember there's one video of Blake painting her fingernails or toenails or maybe with both. And he's like, okay, Sunny. And she's like, you mean Sunny Mermaid Princess? <laughs> Because she loved mermaids yeah. and princesses and unicorns. Just wrap it all into one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. Do you have a special memory that you used to do with her that you have of her? Um, that stands out, you know? Yeah. I don't know if there's one in particular. I think I mean, we, used, we used to live in Idaho and we would play in the leaves and build snowmen together. She was little then, so like two, but mm-hmm. um, she still really loved to do all those things together with me. And I think just doing anything with her because she was such a fun person. Um, like I said, I loved baking with her and cooking with her. Um, I liked, we li- would go on family bike rides together and go on walks together I loved like taking her to the park. She always had so much fun playing at the park, doing different things and making new friends. And um, cause she was really good about making new friends. It was easy for her. Mm-hmm. People are just drawn to her. She really is a light. Yeah. So um, yeah, pretty much just doing anything with her. I don't know if I can think of anything specifically is I do remember one time um, a couple years ago, we decided to take all of our kids to the temple separately, individually. Mm -hmm. So um, the LDS church has lots of temples all around and there's one here in Phoenix that's close to our house. And so I took her one day there and we just went and sat inside the temple. Um, It was super peaceful. Did she love it? Yeah, she did. And then just walked outside because the grounds of the temple there are very beautiful with lots of flowers. Mm -hmm. And we have a picture of her... Um, sitting in front of the temple. And so we have 
the same with our boys as well. Um, so we have those pictures hung in our house cause it's a super special thing for us. Yeah. I'm glad you got that, that you got to do that with her Me and that too. you have that memory. Cause that's an important place mm-hmm. about families. Really. That's what yeah. the temple's about. So mm-hmm. that's great that you could, um, have that experience with her. So let's talk about the accident a little bit. Yeah. Or the way Sunny passed. Mm-hmm. Can you share that with us? Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> Blake and I have boating has been part of our relationship for the whole time we've been together when we were dating and since we've been married. And he said that anytime we ever had a boat, we would always share it. And, um, we had bought our own boat at one point and then he started working for a company and they let us have a boat to use like a brand new, really nice boat. And we would take families out on it. And we had this one family that we didn't really know that we decided we should ask to go to the lake with us. And so they agreed to, and, um, kind of, Leading up to it, um, I was getting prepared for my big test Mm -hmm. and my parents and my sister and her family took my kids camping. So they took them camping the week leading up to us going out to the lake with this family. They got back on a Thursday night and we went to meet the teacher night that same night. Um, And then that morning we went to the lake. Friday morning. Yeah, Yeah, Friday Friday morning. morning. Okay. Um, so we hadn't really seen Sunny cause she had been gone. They had left Sunday and came back Thursday. Um, so we hadn't really been with her very much and we went out with this new family to the lake. Um, her, they had a, a couple of adult kids with them as well. So there was a total of six adults on the boat with some older teenagers and, um, then my family as well. Mm-hmm. And, um, the two older sons that were adults rode first and Blake taught them how to ride. And then we decided to have the mom of the family go next. And, um, she was out there for quite a while, probably about an hour. So this the, is like a s- surfboard or wakeboard yeah, oh, or yeah, something sorry. like that? Uh, yeah. Blake was teaching him how to surf oh, okay. in the boat. So, and it was pretty hot outside. Um, you know, it's, this was the end of July in Arizona. Yeah. It's torture. Um, Yeah. So we always do swim breaks. And, um, since that one had taken such a long time, um, we definitely wanted to make sure people could get out and get swimming. And I remember Sunny being like, Oh, like, are we going to swim soon and stuff? And I was like, yeah, we'll swim. And, um, so she, or sorry. So then after the mom of the family rode, we, um, took turns swimming in the water and just cooling off because it was super hot. Blake and I have a rule where one of us always has to be on the boat um, just in case we need to move the boat somewhere or something. Mm -hmm. So um, I think I got in the water and then he got in and then we got, we asked everybody to get back in the boat. I know the kids had been playing tag at one point and I know Sunny said that she needed to go to the bathroom and she would just use the bathroom out in the water, water, um, as well. So, um, I, this conversation came back to my mind, um, when after the day that we buried Sunny where, and I, my memory is not very good. Um, I had gotten in an accident 15 years ago myself and didn't have a helmet on and everything, you know, and I have had bad short-term memory since. So to remember like insignificant mm-hmm. conversations is not something that I do very well. Um, but I had this conversation pop back into my mind where Sunny was coming into the boat and she's like, hey mom, is it my turn? That I, like, Can I ride yet? And I said, no, you know, because we always let the other family go first. And if we have time, then you can go. And she's like, okay, yeah, I remember. And then she came into the boat and I could have sworn that that conversation was after that swim break. Mm. So I thought she had come into the boat. Um, I feel like maybe God planted that memory into Mm. my mind. She'd be like, yes, she was in the the boat. boat. Um, But then we 
we obviously don't know what happened. Um, Blake was going to start teaching another kid how to ride behind the boat. Here's also a reminder to subscribe and follow this podcast on whatever platform you're listening to. Now, back to the podcast. And we had just gotten this newer surfboard that he was going to have the kid ride. And Blake had never ridden it before, so he was unsure how to teach um, somebody else how to ride behind it Mm -hmm. or ride on it behind the boat. And so he decided that he would... Um, ride it for just like a couple minutes just so he could get a feel of what it would feel like on that board. And um, so he had gotten out in the water. Mind you, there's a decent number of people on the boat. Um, And I was driving the boat. I went forward. I felt a bump. We stop. I look back. Blake's like a little bit further back in the water because I had stopped like a little bit after I had felt the bump. And Sonny's like way back there in the water. And I was Mm. like, what the heck? Like I knew it was bad because I just felt a bump. Yeah. Um, So I drove the boat immediately. I didn't even care about Blake. I just drove immediately over to where she was at. And as soon as I saw her, like saw her, I saw tons of blood in the water. Mm. And... I just, sorry. I tried to act really fast and I jumped into the water. Immediately we was yelling for people to call 911 because I knew it was bad. And then I reached her and I could tell that I'm like, oh, I could like feel that something was wrong. And I was like, oh my gosh, her leg is off. Mm. And, um, Blake is still like trying to swim over to us at this point. I'm just screaming for people to call 911. And there was some other boat that came nearby or that was close to us. And they're like, please call. And they were trying to get a hold of 911. And where we were at on the lake, there was poor reception. And so they try to go somewhere else. And at this point, Blake finally got over to Sunny and me. And he's like, you get back to the boat. I'll bring Sunny over. And, um, he, I don't even know how I got back to the boat. Honestly, mm. I just, I tried so hard to just swim back to the boat and, um, got in the boat and Blake brought Sunny back at the time. I didn't know, but he had asked, um, somebody else on the boat, the husband or the dad of the family to give Sunny a special blessing mm. in our church, we, um, give blessings on people that are sick or hurt, otherwise afflicted. And, um, he gave her a blessing and he didn't even know, like he had just met Sunny, like he didn't really know her name and he definitely wouldn't have known her middle name, but, um, somehow he knew God must've planted her name in his head. And he, told us later that he had started to bless her, that she would be healed, that she would be okay. This is what his intentions were. Mm -hmm. But as he started to say that and wanted to say that he stopped because he knew that he shouldn't do that. And he said, release her spirit or something Mm -hmm. of that nature. And she was gone. Um, And I didn't know about that particular um, experience until after the fact. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't really know what was going on in my head when I was in the boat while that was going on. But Blake brought her into the boat. We didn't really know what to do. I held her and then we decided to get back to the dock. Um, and I was just screaming the entire way back. And the person that gave her the blessing was holding me because um, I was just shaking while I'm holding my daughter who doesn't have a leg on one side and one of her arms has propeller marks on the other side and her other leg that was still there has propeller marks at the bottom of her foot. And, um, so we got back to the dock and well, before we got back to the dock, like I already knew she was gone. Mm -hmm. She, her leg was gone. She had severed her femoral artery, which is a major artery in the body. And you knew that by just seeing. Yeah by Mm -hmm. seeing what had happened and her pupils were already fixed and dilated. And that's also a sign of somebody being gone. No, there was just nothing that could be done. And um, 
yeah, I just, I knew, I just knew she was already gone. Like she was gone within a matter of minutes after the boat had hit her Mm -hmm. or after I, me, my, her mom Mm -hmm. (laughs) ran her over. Supposed to protect her. I don't know how it happened. It just eats me inside. (laughs) But we got back to the dock. There was already the paramedics there. They get her and they start to work on her. I'm like, I don't even know why they're working on her. I already know she's gone. Just leave her little body alone. And they were going to take her to the hospital and I wanted to go with them. And they're like, no, there's no room for you. And it made me so mad. Oh, yeah. I was so, so mad. And um, then... Uh, <laughs> Then Blake and I were trying to get to the hospital and uh, we got in one of the golf carts at the arena and to try to get to our truck and um, some cop comes over and he's like, oh, we, you can't leave yet. And we're like, we want to get to the hospital to be with our daughter. And he's like, no, you can't do that. And he's like, you just have to wait. I'm like, just get in the golf cart with us and ask us whatever you need to ask us. Like, we want to get there. And that was also like really annoying and frustrating because we just wanted to get there. And, um, another, like his supervisor or somebody came over and they're like, it's fine. Just get in the golf cart. And then, um, he asked questions on the way and like drove like super fast to the hospital. And I had called my um, supervisor and she didn't answer. So I called my manager and she answered and was like, there's an accident. My daughter's coming to the ER. So, so she Sunny was taken to the hospital that you actually work at. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's a level one trauma center, Deer okay. Valley Honor Health. And, um, she was there like outside the ER when we got there. So she took us back and we were in a little waiting room and then, um, like I already knew she was gone. they they put they, you in that little waiting room. Yeah. yeah. And, and like, like I said, I already knew she was gone when we were at the lake um, at that point. But we get there and um, they finally let us back in to see her because they obviously want to make her presentable. So um, they had intubated her, which... Like, why? Why? Yeah. <laughs> I don't really know everything that they did. I didn't really want to talk to the doctor about mm-hmm. it. Um so we got to be with her for just a few minutes, held her hand, gave her tons of kisses. And then they made us leave because we had to go talk to the detectives. They did um, an investigation. Mm-hmm. Okay. They separated Blake and myself. And um, I had to do like a sobriety kind of test. I didn't actually have to like breathe on anything or whatever, but I did like walk a line and like answer oh questions gosh. and like have to do like certain things. And you understand why they're doing it, but to yes. you it's so like offensive. Yeah. And like I don't drink I alcohol, never do I this. don't do drugs. Yeah. Like I had eaten breakfast. Like I drink lots of water, especially cause it's yeah. so hot in Arizona out at the lake. And um, anyways, like after they were done with me, I got it. I went into a room to be with uh, my family and then they had to talk to Blake. And um, the, at this point they had moved Sunny from a trauma room to a different ER room. Mm-hmm. And I was like, can we just see her like one more time? I like, I just need to see her one more time. And so we went in t- and got to be with her just a few more minutes. Again, not very long, held her hand, gave her kisses. And then, um, and then that was that. They had to wait for them, uh, the morgue to come pick her up and to do an autopsy. So this was Friday. They didn't do an autopsy on her until um, Wednesday, I think, like the next Wednesday. And um, I had asked that they just not do like a open her up kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, fortunately, the, the boat, the propeller of the boat did not hit her like in the trunk or on her face or on her head anywhere. So, so she they still, had no need to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you could visibly see right. why she, why she passed away. Um, so they respected that and they did not do like an open mm-hmm. autopsy um, where they cut her all open and everything. Um, and yeah, that was, that was pretty much it. So 
So how did your family, were you guys, did you call your family on the way to the hospital? Yeah. For well, them to know, for them to so get there. So while we were still at the lake waiting, cause they were trying to, they were doing stuff on her at the lake. Uh -huh. They said they got a pulse back, but like they didn't. <laughs> um, <clears throat> it's, I mean, I've been in many situations where people have died and we've tried to bring them back to life. And sometimes we've been successful. Sometimes we haven't. People don't always necessarily understand or um, they may think that they can feel a pulse, but there's really not one there. Mm. Um, and sometimes like when your body is just like trying to die, like the heart will just like randomly like right. beat. Okay. Um, so <clears throat> while we were at the lake still and they were working on her, I'd called my mom and I said, Sunny had been in an accident and I didn't tell her that she had died, even though I knew she was already dead. And I, they were like, Oh, we got a pulse back. So I was like, they are working on her. And so she, um, and I was like, the boys are here and at the lake still and whatever. And, I'd also called my um, mother-in-law. She'd answer. So I called my father-in-law and he like didn't really understand what was going on because I'm just Hysterical. frantic. Yeah. And um, finally like understood like something was bad. And so they, uh, those are the only people we called. And then um, my mom must have called all my siblings. Mm. So I have a sister that lives in Cottonwood and she drove down immediately. Um, her husband and their kids actually ended up picking up my boys from the lake. Mm. And then um, my brother that was in PA school um, on the East Valley, he drove to the hospital. My other brothers at the time were living in Utah. They flew down as soon as they could, um, which ended up being that same night but my sister, my parents and my little brother met us at the hospital. Mm -hmm. um, and so they were in a different room, like in the observation area. And, and did you know they were I there by then? Um, I didn't know they were there until after I think I talked to mm -hmm. with the detectives. Um, Cause then they're like, Oh yeah, you can. So the whole here. time that you're doing the investigation part, you're just alone mm -hmm. by myself. Oh. Oh, and I'm sorry. them and them thinking that I, would do something yeah. on purpose like this to my daughter, which is, I mean, I don't know if they were thinking that or not, you know, but obviously just they're the just, idea that they think that you did something that is, you, I could. Yeah. I yeah. mean, which I, and I understand that they're just trying to do their job because there are people out there that, but it is so children. hurtful to you. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like oh, I would never do yeah. that in a million years. Yeah. Um, so yeah, my family, those family members were there and stuff and they had obviously reached out to other family members as well and mm -hmm. asked people to pray and everything. And at that time they didn't realize that Sunny was already gone. Um, so I don't know if they knew until, I mean, well, Blake was with them before I was, so he must, he must have said, he must have told them that she was dead, mm. but I don't remember. I honestly don't know. Yeah. Well, so. So with that, do you feel like um, it was helpful to have all that, those people there or... Um, I think it was fine to have my, my sister and brother and my parents there. Cause it wasn't like too many people. Mm -hmm. um, and that's your immediate support system anyways. Yeah. 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 And I just remember my brother kept saying, it's okay. Like you're still a good mom. <laughs> Didn't really necessarily feel like that. <laughs> he just but knew what you must have been thinking. Daughter. Yeah. Yeah. We did have a couple church leaders there too. And um, one of them said something that made my little brother super upset. Mm. And um, he's like, no, that's not true. Like, don't say that. Like, As he's trying to say words of comfort. Yeah. The, the church leader's trying to say words of comfort. Yeah, um, but it just didn't land. It didn't, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it was the rest of the right time for those words. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously people don't always understand the right things to say and right. at the right time and everything. So. Or if there's anything to say really. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that you did have help there and you have a really large extended family. So mm -hmm. everybody came afterwards. Um, well, most of them, you had a lot of people here that week. Yes. Afterwards. We didn't have a lot of people here. Um, one of my cousins, he has a plane and he actually flew out the next morning just to come over and be with me from Texas. Wow. So he had texted me, I think Saturday morning and he's like, should I come? And I said, yes. So he flew out. <laughs> Good. 
Yeah. So, so that was helpful. Just in the days after the immediate loss, yeah. it was helpful to have people around you. To a degree. It can become um, overwhelming. Yeah. And then I would just go up to my room and just be away from people because yeah. I'm like, yes, it's good, but then it's not at the same time. Like yeah. I just can't constantly be around people. Yeah. So, and I just would sit on the couch just doing nothing. <laughs> mm-hmm. well, understandable. And, yeah. Yeah. For sure. And then, so how do you, how were the boys? You right know, afterwards? Yeah, right afterwards. Did they understand what was happening? Did um, Or were you, did you have the family that was just there taking care of them? I, yeah, I honestly don't even really know like the immediate afterwards because I did have like family and friends that were helping out taking, taking care of them and stuff. And unfortunately, Dieter's birthday was about... 10 to 12 days after the accident. And Mm -hmm. I didn't even do anything for his birthday. I did nothing. Um, We had a friend actually throw a birthday party for him. I didn't even go to the birthday party. Like Mm -hmm. that's okay, Camille. It's okay. (laughs) (laughs) You get a pass. And to be honest, he probably won't really remember much about that. Yeah. Cause that was his fourth birthday. And he did feel love. Yeah. You know, he had people around him and he felt loved. And so I, I'm sure that's what's going to be the lasting memory on that one. Not that, oh, my mom wasn't there. You know, yeah. it may have just even gone over his head. He may not ever really realize think, I wasn't even there. Yeah. Yeah. Think about that too much. Um, uh, was, would you have done anything different in that like first initial couple of days? Um, I don't think so. It was all just kind of like a, a whirlwind, blur. still in shock yeah. and and, and I know we had so. at church, we had asked people to not come because yeah. you were so, you, you had a lot of family around and it was, yeah. you know, um, d- d- were you okay with that? Did that feel good? Yeah. I didn't want a bunch people of around. people coming over. And I'm sure your close circle of friends, you would reach out to them as you needed and not just have a yeah. bunch of like people that love you and know you, mm-hmm. but may not be your first or second ring of support. Yeah. You know? Um, it's kind of hard cause you don't want to be a spectacle to everyone. Mm-hmm. You know, you just feel like you're, you know, on display for everybody to see all yeah. the rawness of it all. Yeah. And know? I'm not that type of person at all. Yeah. I don't like being the center of attention. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, what, what did you, some of the, one of the questions that you have on here were, um, were there any support system or rituals that helped you during that time? Was there anything specific that you did that you felt like could get you through that first initial week? Because it was a week before you had the funeral. Yeah. Um, which seems like a really long, when you're living it, it's a really long time. Mm-hmm. But how did you cope in that week? Um, or even immediately after, you know? Yeah, I don't think there was much coping at that point because mm-hmm. I don't think I could feel very much other than pain. It's the worst pain I've ever felt in my life. Mm -hmm. And I have fallen off a cliff before, like a 40 foot cliff. And I would do that a hundred more times if I didn't have to have the pain of losing a child. Mm -hmm. I'd rather break my body a hundred times. It's way worse. The pain is way worse. And um, so I don't feel like I've really, I really coped immediately afterwards. I don't feel like I could, I, I would try to pray, but it was so hard. It was so, so hard to pray. Can we talk about that for just a second? Yeah. Um, and it's understandable. Some people can, and that's their coping skill or their coping, you know, mechanism. But why, what made it so hard? Were you just angry? Were you just like so shocked that this is what has now happened to your life or what prevented you from praying? Do you think? Um, I don't think I was necessarily angry. I don't feel like I've really been angry. Just like, don't understand like Mm -hmm. why, like, why did this have to happen? Like, why couldn't I have not, um, had a prompting from, heavenly father or God to be like, Hey, make sure Sonny's in the boat Mm -hmm. because I've had those kinds of experiences before where it's like, Hey, check this or do that. And it's 
maybe wasn't obviously not as serious of a thing, right? But it prevented the most things. significant thing ever, yeah, and you and wanted I the prompting and you didn't get the prompting for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I don't know if it's I don't know if I was necessarily angry. I was just like confused and, like you said, like still in shock um, that this could even happen. Like it's literally the worst nightmare of my life. Like yeah. I've always been so cautious at the lick because it's literally literally the worst nightmare that could have ever happened happened to me right mm-hmm. right so with the prayer part um did you so you didn't feel like you could pray at that time were you upset by other people praying like around you or on your behalf yeah. or we talked about blessings before mm-hmm. um were you able to receive a blessing or was that um, something that you didn't want to participate in I at that did time get a blessing um few days after the fact there was just so many people at my house and I was tired of it and um someone that I knew growing up actually builds coffins Mm -hmm. or caskets and um, my parents reached out to him to make sunnies for us because we wanted it to be purple and pink and sparkly Sparkly, yeah and they don't really have those kinds of options normally So, um, he did that for us. He had it completed on Wednesday and we went to go look at it. So this was like five days after whatever, from Friday to Wednesday Mm -hmm. after the fact, um, Blake and I went to go look at it with my dad and, um, we went back over to my dad's house and he gave me a blessing. But at that point, I don't really feel like I could feel anything Mm -hmm. because I still felt numb. Um, and I ended up spending the night at my parents' house just me and my parents were there, no one else. And just cause I kind of needed a break from everybody that was over right. here. Um, just the constant chaos of so many people coming in and, and out of the house. Kids running all the around. Time. And yeah. 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 So I slept over there that night and, um, that was, it was better. I feel like that I did that. And, but like I said, I still felt like numb. Like I just don't really feel like I got anything out of the blessing. I'm sure mm-hmm. it was good, but, yeah. I just, you weren't feeling the comfort that, no. Yeah. And like, I've, like you said, like people praying for me, like, and lo- I've heard before people like, Oh, I can feel the prayers and stuff. And I'm like, you I don't know what it. you're talking about. Yeah. Like, yeah. If you are praying for me, keep praying yeah, because you got to pray harder. Uh, yeah. I can't feel anything. <laughs> I can't feel nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So then, so with you and Blake, and then you have Dieter and Tucker. Mm-hmm. Did you notice? Have you noticed that you are grieving in different ways? Yeah. Um, so Blake definitely at the beginning, especially, would be more interested in getting out and talking to people, or having people come over and talk to him about things. And I just wasn't wasn't ready for that kind of stuff. Um, didn't want to be around people. Really, didn't want to talk mm-hmm. to people. Um, there was a couple people that would maybe go on walks with here and there, um, or on a hike, but I, I couldn't really be around a whole lot of people. And, um, Blake would go do like exercises and lots of different things. And, um, I just didn't want to do anything. (laughs) Did that frustrate you that he was able to do that? Or did you look Um, at it like, I I just remember going through this and had an experience once and we were doing a social, we had a social thing going on and I was so angry at my husband at the time that mm -hmm. I was like, our child just died. How can you like, well, yeah, Blake went to church that same weekend that Mm -hmm. Sunny died and I didn't go back to church for at least a couple months. Um, But I don't think so because we had seen a, um, like she's like the top three or whatever grief counselors in Arizona, Mm -hmm. or at least in the Valley, um, fairly soon afterwards and like had talked to a different counselor and other people and stuff. And they just said, people are going to grieve differently and you have to give each other grace. Mm -hmm. Um, that's good that you, that you knew what to expect or yeah. 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 That's Um, good. He did go on a bike ride three days after the accident and got himself hurt. And that made me mad. (laughs) Cause I'm like, I already have enough to worry about. Like, cause he had cut his arm pretty dang good. And that was really frustrating. I was like, dude, like I can't handle anymore. Mm -hmm. So, um, 
but I'm like, if you could just be careful when you want to go do yeah. your things, like, I don't <laughs> like go do your things. Like if that's how it's going to help you cope Was with it hard stuff. for you to separate like the medical knowledge that you have with like just this instance with Blake or even with Sunny? Like, did you think that that helped you in your understanding or in your grief or do you think that that wasn't even a factor. I mean, I, I know that you said you knew right away because of the certain artery that had been severed or whatever, mm -hmm. but were you able to like put the clinical side away and just focus on like the mom part of it? And does that make sense? Yeah. I definitely don't feel like I was really focusing on the medical stuff. Okay. And I don't even know if at that moment I was like, Oh, she did this, this, yeah. Yeah. You know, um, like I did check her pupils on the boat and, um, and stuff. And I did do like a few compressions, but like, I'm like, why? Like, I'm not yeah. want to like break her ribs for, right. for any reason. Um, cause I already know she's gone, Yeah, but like, yeah. Cause like I, just the amount of blood that was in the water, like I, I just knew like mm -hmm. she had lost. And I'm sure you probably could. didn't have to have a medical no knowledge mm -mm. to know that. Yeah. You know? I mean, yeah. I mean, some people might have been like, oh, well, maybe they, they still can. They can still save her. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, uh, yeah, some other, some people that don't have any medical knowledge may still be like, oh, okay, no, like she, yeah, there's no way you can save that. Yeah. I see. So, okay. So now we're coming up. We're almost at six months. Yeah. How do you feel like you're coping? Um, you're, you're just at the very beginning still. Yeah. So that's just, it's just... You know, I, I'm following your outline on the questions that you guys have interviewed some people for. Mm -hmm. And some of it, I feel like it doesn't really apply to you, but we're going to yeah. kind of like kind of hit them. We're going to kind of fit them in and see if mm -hmm. we can. Um, so one of them is how do you feel like you're coping now? Crappy. <laughs> do you? Yeah. Tell me why. It just sucks. It does suck. And I, I've heard of other people that have ran over their children with cars or lawnmowers and it was a complete accident. And, um, I just don't know how I can forgive myself because mm. I was the one driving the boat. I understand there was other adults and they could have said something. They could have been like, where's Sunny or whatever. But ultimately I was the one driving the boat. I ran over my daughter. Mm. And I've prayed so much to have that taken from me, but it, I have not had that taken from me. And I just, I miss her so much. It's so hard to not have her here. It's yeah. terrible. And I've, and I've always like struggled with anxiety for, a, not always, but for a while I've struggled with anxiety and anxiety and depression typically go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. And, um, I can definitely feel that depression settling in more so than it has. And it's been, like you said, almost six months now. And I'm like, I do not want to be like this. And I feel like I have more worse days than not lately. And I'm in MP school and I do rotations and I take care of patients that come in for anxiety and depression and I'm like, and they will tell me how they're feeling. I'm like, I feel the exact same way. I don't tell them that, right. but I'm like, I'm feeling the exact same way. And they will have tried doing lifestyle changes and it doesn't work. And so we'll start them on medications. And I'm like, I do not want to have to start on medication. I've been on a medication before. After I had Sunny, I had postpartum depression and I had to take Zoloft. And it made me feel just like nothing. Like I had no feeling right. and I hated it. And so I got off of it as soon as I could. I only, I was on it for like six months and then I tapered myself off because my chemicals were messed up in my brain. I needed to fix them. And, um, I've talked to multiple people that say you just need to, well, they don't say you just need to do this cause this will help. But like, yeah. um, they said for me, exercising has been very helpful and, um, those exercise a lot to build up those serotonin levels. So that's what I'm trying to do right now is try to go about it a more natural way of doing lots of exercise to build up that serotonin because 
I mean, I can start on a medication and I'm not like completely against starting on a medication. Um, but just from my experience, having been on a medication in the past and how it made me feel, I didn't really like it. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know it wouldn't necessarily be a long-term thing. It may be, may not be. Um, and maybe it was that particular it could have been that medication you that needed something I didn't different. Like. Yeah. 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 So, um, right now I'm trying to do it more in a natural way and I'll try to give that some time to see if that will help. Mm -hmm. But like you said, it's only been six months yeah. since I lost my daughter. So I, people may f f seem, or people may look at me and be like, Oh wow, she's doing great. Like she's smiling. She's doing all this and whatever, but they don't see me at home. No. They don't see me in my car. And you're um, just going through the motions yeah. of doing Not normal. Not to say that I don't get happy or I don't laugh right. at things or whatever. Do you feel bad when you have happy moments? Um, Sometimes. Not all the time. I mean, I haven't really felt any or haven't really felt any joy mm -hmm. um, since the fact. But um, yeah, it just, it sucks right now. It really sucks. It's yeah. hard. I... I with you being just six months out, I hope you're not putting too much pressure on yourself. There's this expectation that you need to be further along in this process than you are. Mm -hmm. It is really sucky. And you probably are having more bad days than good days. That is so normal. Even though it's just the worst spot to be in, it's so normal. And I think there's something physiologically that happens to us when our child dies. Because they're part of us. Mm -hmm. And so now it's changed. It's like something within our DNA is just completely changed now and we're never going to be the same. I agree. And you just, you have to kind of start to learn to be this new person that we are, you know, it's, mm -hmm. um, but it's super hard. So I just hope that you're, when you know that you have these really bad days that you're right where you're supposed to be and you can't, this grief is so messy and it's, you, there's no way around it. You just got to put your head and your shoulder into it and you just got to get through it. And trying these different, you know, exercising is so, such a good thing. And, you know, are you, what other, um, are you doing any journaling or anything else that you, this podcast is one actually, Yeah, <laughs> you know, to be therapeutic. Um, are you finding that it's helpful um, I don't know if I find the podcast necessarily helpful for myself. I see that it helps some of the people that we've interviewed, mm -hmm. um, because they've shared with us that it's been kind of like a therapeutic thing for them. Um, and so that makes my heart happy that it's helping those people. And then since we've released the podcast, we've had people reach out and say, this is amazing that you're doing this. And, um, we don't like Blake had somebody message him from Texas and their son, um, had died two days after Sunny. Mm -hmm. So they're like on the same, same. timeline as mm -hmm. us. Um, and they had like looked for other things and they found our podcast on Facebook and it's been very helpful for him. So that, that makes me happy in a, to a degree, I guess. Um, because I still question, like, is it helping people? Like, oh, like I we're doing this yeah. to try to help people. But then I still question myself, like, even though people have told me that it's helped people, I'm like, is it helping people? Is it people? really? Yeah. Like, I know, like, I know God wants us to do this to try to help people. Um, and I was just, I'm just still doing it. Yeah. You know? I think it's interesting that, you know, a lot of times I think people would be further in the grief before they start something, a project this big or start something mm -hmm. that would be helpful to other people. I just think it's super selfless of you. And it's so wonderful that you're, you're doing it at the same time that you're going through it. You're not mm -hmm. healing first and then looking, then saying, okay, well, what can I do to, you know, help other people? Yeah. You're kind of in the journey right along with what you're, this podcast that you're doing 
And so hopefully you're able to pick up some things from what other people can share with you as well Mm -hmm. that might help you a little bit as you, you know, in this really raw time that you're in, it may be beneficial to you too. I don't know, but um, yeah, there's lots of different things. I, I just love that you guys are putting yourself out there and you're trying to help other people, even though you're still in so much pain yourself. So thank you for doing that. Yeah. I, I know it can't be easy. It's got to be draining for you guys. It's, yeah. You know, exhausting. Yeah. <laughs> These interviews are exhausting. Oh, I'm sure. sure. Yeah. But I think you're right. I think there's a lot of people that, that it's helping. And I don't think it's helping just people that have lost a child. No, I think it's helping mm-hmm. people that know people that mm-hmm. are experiencing this type of loss. You know, yeah. it's giving them information that, okay, now maybe I can support a person, this person that I love in a different way than I thought because of what they're, you know, the information that they're gaining from this podcast. Mm-hmm. So I think there, there's a lot of um, different aspects to who you're helping in yeah. this. Well, you also asked, like you asked about journaling too. I am doing that as Are well. You? Not on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. Um I have like my own little sunny journal that I'll write down memories so I don't forget things Mm -hmm. or experiences that I have that I feel like maybe sunny was um, involved in in some way um, since the accident has happened or special dreams that uh, my boys have had about her. Um, Tucker's has his own journal too, that I'm like, I encourage him to write in and he'll oh, good. draw pictures or write letters to Sunny and, um, do that as well, which I feel like is helpful to a degree. Mm-hmm. Um, and how old is Tucker? He's 10. He's 10. Okay. Yeah, he just turned 10 in October. And Sunny was how old when she passed? Six. Six. And Dieter is four. four. Mm-hmm. And he was three when she passed. Yeah. Almost his, four. Yeah, yeah. He was almost four. Yeah. So how is... So you said that Tucker's been able to, you know, express some of his feelings in this journal and through art mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff. What about Dieter? How's Dieter doing? Um, I think he's doing all right. We ended up getting a dog. Okay. Um, like a couple months after the fact, uh, maybe three months after the fact or so mm-hmm. that Sunny died. Um, I just really felt like we needed one um, to help the boys. I know pets can be very therapeutic. Mm-hmm. Um. So I think that has helped Dieter to a degree because he was pretty angry. Sunny was like his big coping tool. She would mm-hmm. always help him calm down. And that's all of a sudden gone. Yeah. So yeah. he's like, what the heck And I now I have all these do? major emotions that yeah. I, yeah, and she's not exactly. the one here to So he was me. pretty yeah. mean to us like 85% of the day every day. Mm. Um, and he's gotten a lot better. He... I try to always encourage my boys to talk about Sunny whenever they want. They can tell me anything. Um, he, I think he's, I think Dieter's doing okay. Mm-hmm. Tucker does see a counselor at school. Um, I don't know how consistently anymore. Um, I do know that he saw her last Friday. Um, they don't always talk about Sunny um, from what he's told me. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, and she's a school counselor, so right. she doesn't necessarily deal with grief. grief. Yeah, which is a whole different thing. And so, trauma. Yeah. Because exactly. let's be honest, yeah, they were there. The they witnessed mm-hmm. it. Yeah. yeah. So and there's trauma Tucker that goes along more with that. than Dieter did, too. Um, but I don't know for that for a fact. Well, I think so. Tucker was probably just more aware of what was happening yeah. than Dieter, mm-hmm. you know, at the same time. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. The, the trauma is a whole different oh, yeah. animal than just, you know, talk through everyday problems, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, well, I'm glad that, that they're, uh, that you're able to get help from them. And we'll probably talk about that a little bit more as we go through this, as we mm-hmm. follow your outline on the questions. Um, so did you notice any stages of grief that are described in the grief cycle? I know you, I know you know that what they are, but if maybe if somebody's listening, that's denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. Yeah. Have you have you experienced all of those or some of those or not yet? Like um, at like, six months, what have you experienced yeah. <laughs> other than the complete horror and shock of the whole thing, you know? Yeah. Like I said, I don't know if I've necessarily been angry per se, just more confused um, than anything as far as like that part goes. But definitely the other things. Um lots of denial. I still 
like I understand that she's gone and I don't know if I've necessarily accepted it though yet. Um, Do you still have those moments where it just like takes your breath away? Like it just yeah. like it just grips your chest becomes tight and you're like, what? Yeah. How can how can this be what our life has become? Yeah. You know, how is it that how are we supposed to live without her? Yeah. I still get like that. So I still experience a lot of denial and so I don't, I don't really feel like I've accepted that she's gone yet. Um, yeah. And there's a difference between knowing logically mm-hmm. and accepting in your heart yeah. that they're, they're not always the same thing. No, I don't think so. Yeah. And like I said, obviously depression, yeah. definitely hitting that one real good right now. Um, let's see what were the, I can't remember. What the um, bargaining. Ones. Oh yeah. I mean, um, Right afterwards, for probably the first couple of weeks or so, I was definitely bargaining, like, why, like, why couldn't I have done this or this or, you know. If I would have just done this or, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, maybe a little bit of that here and there now. Um, not not as much so now, though, with the yeah. bargaining. And then what about... Um, you said you're not really sure that you've been able to accept it yet. Yeah. Acceptance is the other one. Mm-hmm. Do you think that something needs to happen for you to be able to accept it? Or do you think that's just a time thing that you're going to have to? Mm. And that may just be a weird question. but I'm not sure. It may yeah. be time because I don't know. Because yeah. maybe time will help me accept that. Or maybe something significant needs to happen that will help me accept accept her passing. Mm-hmm. I don't really know yet. Yeah. Let's um, let's talk about like the emotions that you experienced like right after the days yeah. and the weeks after it. Um, tell me a little bit about that. And then if we can, I want to touch on the media aspect of it that mm-hmm. came in, if you're comfortable with that. Yeah, that's fine. So tell me just the emotions that you've immediately, we kind of talked about it a little bit more b- before, but um, do you think... Well, you tell me first and then I'll ask you my, <laughs> my media question. Um, kind of like I said before, a lot of numbness. It's really hard mm-hmm. to feel much of anything, but I did say I could feel the pain. Um, just the absolute worst pain in the world to me that I've ever felt in my life. Yeah. Um, and like I said, I've broken my body. So, um, it's, it's awful. Um, and I asked that because when I was talking with Blake, he said that he had a lot of embarrassment and mm-hmm. that really, I think it kind of took me by surprise a little bit. I never considered that he had embarrassment yeah. with this whole thing. And I thought, well, why, why does, why is he embarrassed? You know? And then when we start talking more about like, he's this boating enthusiast and he yeah. teaches people how, and you know, and I had said to him that everybody knows that you guys are the safest people. You follow all safety protocols. And he was like, well, that's what makes it worse. Mm-hmm. And so it, what type of emotions did, I mean, you say you haven't said it, but from what you're saying, I feel like you've ex- experienced a lot of guilt. Yeah. And so because oh, you were also part of the cycle, huh? Yeah. That you were driving the boat. Mm-hmm. Any other feelings that um like for right afterwards yeah I don't really know maybe some people did things that were like somewhat annoying I'm like eh, like and I didn't really think about it at the time as much and it didn't really like affect me as much because I just could care less you don't care, about yeah. people at that moment mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like I don't care what you're saying to me like if it doesn't yeah. involve what we're trying to do for Sunny with planning with the funeral. And and honestly, like that was hard in itself, planning the funeral and yeah. the burial and people constantly asking me questions and make, having me make decisions. And, and I understand all that needed to be done, but like after the fact, down. I'm like, okay, like I'm done. Please don't anyone ask me to make any decisions for like a while. I need a break. And I think you did. And this is how it happened for me too there was a designated family member that it was kind of like, that's the point of contact for everybody. Yeah. We did have Blake's sister. Yeah. And I had that in mind as well. And that made like some of the hard decisions, like the Mm -hmm. hard 
you know, um, just basic decisions and then said, okay, here's some options instead of, yes. cause it was just too overwhelming all oh, at yeah, once for sure. So they would go and make, you know, they would pick out the plot or, you know, here's three plots, which one mm-hmm. would you like? Cause I, yeah. I went to the cemetery and I just couldn't do it. And so it's, I think that that's a really helpful thing to have a point of contact person that all the information is coming into that person Mm -hmm. and that person is disseminating the information to you. They're kind of like the filter between the world and, you know, and you. Yeah. And I think that's super helpful for people. Did you find that helpful having Blake's sister? Yeah, definitely. She just, she knew, she knew what to do. She was very helpful indeed. And I am very comfortable with her. Mm -hmm. So she stayed with, she got there that night that the accident had happened and she stayed with us up until the funeral and then left. Um, so a little over a week and I was totally fine if Mm -hmm. she was just hanging out in our house because, and there's some decisions that they can make that there's such small decisions, Mm -hmm. just like, you know, do you guys want dinners brought in tonight? Mm-hmm. nobody really needs to bother you with that. Yeah. They can bother her with that. Exactly. You know, just stuff like that. There's just like little things like that. You Especially because I wasn't really eating anyway. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's mostly just to feed the other people. And yeah. Blake, was, Blake was able to eat, but I couldn't. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I just think that that's super important. That was super helpful yeah, to have that, that go-to person, mm-hmm. you know? Um, okay, so let's talk about the media just a little bit because mm-hmm. I just, being on the outside and watching this um I just just felt so bad for you because there was so I don't personally I don't think that the media needed to put in there that the mother was driving the boat. I think that was just pouring salt in a wound. Mm-hmm. You know, I thought that they could have protected you. That's me looking at it from the outside and saying, why are they protecting her from that? It's just an added layer of pain mm-hmm. that didn't need to be there. Did you feel that way or were you angry at the media or did you feel like it was deserved or well, in your guilt, did you say like, oh, I deserve that, you know, or whatever? How do, what was your experience with that? Well, originally you had told us not to look at anything for a little while. Mm. Um, After your experience and with the news media and everything. um, And I wasn't planning on it. But then Blake had looked one up or something. Mm. So then I read it and saw that. And then he also, obviously, like, you know, he has a YouTube channel with boating. And um, a lot of our videos that we had on there were safety tips. And Mm. we had some, I'm going to try not to use bad words here. (laughs) Some very unkind person. Um, say on there, well, this aged badly. And I'm like, why? Why do you have to say that when this family is already hurting? And I did reply to him and I did use a not nice word, but I was just so angry. So I guess I did experience anger because mm-hmm. I was angry at people for just They're judging in, me. Yeah, for, judging you and just like, the you don't in, even understand. Yeah. yeah, You don't understand. Like that just makes me hurt so much worse the than I already do. The of the situation, yeah. yeah. And um, so then Blake had disabled all of his comments at that point. Hey, we'll jump back to the podcast in just a second. Thank you for listening. Also, just wanted to take the time to let you know we started a Patreon account for the Lost Child podcast. If you want to support us financially to help share these stories with the world, there's a link in the video description or podcast description that you can go and find our Patreon account. If you don't know much about Patreon, what it is, is it's a platform where you can sign up for a monthly subscription to help support our podcast. There's three different membership levels. For as little as $10 a month, you can help support the Lost Child podcast. So So please help support the podcast and help support us by visiting the link in that video description. We thank you. Now back to the podcast. We had multiple news stations reach out to talk to us and we're just like, no, like Mm. leave us alone. Um, so yeah. And I have since looked at multiple news articles and they always say the mother was driving the boat. The mother was driving the boat. I'm like, I already freaking know. Like, and, and does it change the outcome? No. To me, like, I was like, why, why do you have to have that in there? Yeah. It doesn't change the outcome. It doesn't, it just piles on more guilt for you, mm-hmm. you know? 
Well, and unnecessarily the, so Blake had a interview with a news station just a couple of days ago to talk about the podcast mm-hmm. and they had put the video, you know, like on YouTube and I was looking at it the next day cause I was already asleep when they had aired it. Um, and I don't know why went to the comments and people are just saying awful things on there, like that we should be arrested and that we're, you know, just like unfit to be parents and just mean, mean things. And like, why do I, why did I get on here to look at these comments? Right. Like these people are just, and I try to get myself to remember like these things are like, daggers in Satan's tool belt Mm -hmm. that he just is like, here, does this make you feel any better? Does this make you feel better? And I'm just have to remind myself like, this is Satan. People that are trying to cause contention and make people feel terrible. Those things come from Satan. The ugliness of the world. The ugliness of the world. That is not from God. God would not want me to be like that at all. And I have to just try to remind myself that those people are probably broken having crappy lives <laughs> yeah. right now. And yeah. so they feel better if they make somebody else feel bad. Yeah. So. so, okay. So you've had all of this negative, you know, and you know, it's coming from Satan. Are you able to find strength? Are you able to pray yet and find strength to? Yeah. I've been praying for a while. Good. Um, and I still, but like I said, I haven't really been able to forgive myself yeah. and I don't know when, if ever in this life, that's going to happen for me. Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah, I definitely, I still pray and I still try to read my scriptures every day. We do scriptures with our boys every day um, and pray with them every day. Blake and I started doing um, scripture study as a couple as well um, to try to just be closer to God and Mm -hmm. have a better relationship between ourselves as well. Um. Do you feel like that's helping or do you, are you still kind of in the, just going through the motions, hoping that you'll feel something yeah. and it could change every day. It could be different. Like yeah, some I days feel like it, it is different yeah. every day. Some days I'm like, Oh yeah, this is so good. Is but helpful. then later that day, it's like, Oh, this is crappy. And yeah. like, like I'll go to church on Sunday and then I'm like, Oh, I'm going to do really good and like go to church. And then later that day I'm like, Oh, today sucks. Mm-hmm. Like I'm trying, I am trying to do those things that I'm supposed to do going to church and praying and trying to be closer to God. But sometimes it just doesn't feel like it does anything. Like, why am I even doing it if it's, but then there are days that are really good days. And I feel like a lot of the time it's when I'm not like in my own head. Mm -hmm. So it is helpful that I am in school and am doing my rotations right now because staying busy, I'm able to focus on the patients that come into the office and try to help them with the things that they have going on in their lives, whether it be mental or physical. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I've been told multiple times too, like it's thinking of other people and trying to serve other people. So I, I try to do that. I'm trying to do that more and more and more. And just, are you finding that helpful? Um, I don't know, to a degree. Sometimes maybe yes, sometimes maybe no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think it's um, great that you're doing it. And I think that as we have this, you know, like some days you're feeling it, some days you're not. If we can cling to the days that we're feeling it to get us to the next point that we can feel it again. Because it's really easy to just give up and say, well, I'm not feeling anything. I'm like, why am I doing this? You Mm -hmm. know? And then that just puts this bigger wedge between you and God and so keep my advice would be to keep moving forward in that direction and keep looking for those moments that you feel yeah that will get you to the next moment that you can feel again you know because it is it's hard to um it would be nice to be able to just say yes i just pray and i all my pain goes away or i read my scriptures and it's all my pain life. goes away <laughs> that's not real life mm-hmm. you know it's not it can bring us peace for sure um but it's not, it's not a constant piece. I don't think Yeah, that was my experience anyways. And like, yeah, like you said, clinging and it's trying to hold on to that truth and knowledge that we do know, um, no matter what, even whatever 
crap comes our way. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, as clinging and holding on to that as tight as you possibly can. Yeah. Has Blake been, I've seen him being such a protector of you. Mm-hmm. Um, has he tried to protect you as far as like the media and stuff goes? Or is he pretty open about just saying this is what's out there and we're going to work through, you know, these feelings together. I mean like or, the articles and yeah. stuff that are out there. Yeah. Um, I don't think we've really talked about it much and I haven't looked up anymore really. Like I read one and like I've seen the titles of other yeah. ones and other things, but that doesn't mean I need to read them all. Right. Yeah. Do yourself a favor and don't so, read them. Yeah. yeah. I'm not yeah. going to. It's just like keep pouring, you know, oh. salt in my wounds. Yeah. You're yeah. Like, well, knock me when I'm down, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, for sure. So. Uh, I'm sorry that that's how that ended up playing out. And you know, well, I, like, I, yeah, I always like just you felt said so bad about that with Blake's embarrassment. I mean, I don't know if I necessarily feel embarrassed, but it's just like, Maybe it's embarrassment. I don't know. But like, yeah, like we were these people that are like super into being so strict on our boat, yeah. like such strict rules. So the fact that this would happen to somebody or to people like us is just not logical. No. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. And I think, you know, the people that know you know that you guys are that way. And the people that are saying these mean things, they don't know anything about you, Mm -hmm. you know? And so don't put weight into what these strangers who know absolutely nothing about you are saying, you know, they're just saying it because they can behind a keyboard. Exactly. You know, say it to my face. Say it. Yeah. And they wouldn't Mm -hmm. because they know it would be so painful. Yeah. Well, they are probably cowards. Yeah, for sure. So, um, so how have you found ways to just cope with the guilt part of it, not just the loss of Sunny and the gaping hole that it's made in your family, but how are you dealing with the, the guilt? I don't know if I really am trying to kind of just, I guess, uh, compartmentalize, mentalizing them. Yeah. Yeah. And just pushing it aside for now. Yeah. But I mean, it feels like it just keeps coming back and back and, so I don't know. Like I, I pray, mm-hmm. I pray that I don't have to feel that anymore. Um, what about the, um, different therapies? Are you finding, have you tried? So, um, I did do EMDR, which, um, is like for trauma specifically. Mm-hmm. And I did that. I started that maybe like a couple months or so after the fact of the accident and that helped me to even be able to talk about the accident. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was able, able to share the accident with you and what actually happened. I feel like because I was able to do that therapy, um, and even like some of the different feelings within the accident, like I was, so mad at those paramedics and I was so frustrated and annoyed with that police officer. Um, but like, I just, I don't have those feelings towards them anymore because Mm -hmm. of that therapy that I did. Good. It worked for me. Um, and I know it might not work for everybody because I feel like God gives us so many different tools, um, because we are all different people and not every single tool is going to help every single person. And even with that, not every single tool is going to carry you through. Like you may have to switch up your tool, you know, like you may have to switch up what type you did the EMDR, but Mm -hmm. after you feel like you've, if you feel like you're done with that, then there may be a different type of therapy that you need to do. Well, yeah. So I did, I got finished doing EMDR in November and I didn't really feel like I needed it anymore or it would benefit me anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, so I did try doing some talk therapy. I had one of my friends that I grew up with, um, in church, who used to be one of my leaders, tell me, or give me, um, a name. And so I did a a session with her and I was like, okay, maybe or whatever, kind of still feeling it out. And, did another one with her and I was just like, nah, I was like, I don't need this. Like I talk to people all the time, like not everybody, right. but like 
I'll you talk have a to support people. group that yeah. you, can, you can talk to. I'm like, to. I feel like I don't even really necessarily need this, at least right now mm-hmm. in my life. And that may change later. So, yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not doing any therapies right now. Um, other than like therapy for myself, as far as like journaling mm-hmm. and, um, trying to take care of myself physically and stuff, trying to eat healthy and trying to exercise. And I feel like that's also a therapy in itself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not just like the traditional therapies of going to somebody to talk and, and everything. So yeah, I'm not doing anything else currently. And, um, yeah. And and that's not to say that if somebody's listening that, you know, not to try therapy, different types of therapy for sure. Cause try it. And then, and my only, this is what I say all the time that therapists are like a pair of shoes. You got to just keep trying on mm-hmm. until you find the right fit because not every therapist is going to be the right fit for you. Yeah. You know, you could go to a therapist and you couldn't stand it. And I love that person or mm-hmm. vice versa. Or, exactly. you know, a friend can say, this is the best therapist. Go to this person. You're like, okay, I hated that person. You yeah. know, like that wasn't not, not helpful. So we have to find the right therapist for us. Mm-hmm that we can click with and we can feel like we can open up to because otherwise it's pointless to go there and, you know, if you're doing talk therapy and you feel like you can't talk to your therapist, that's probably not a good combination, yeah. you know? So um, what about your relationships with your family? Uh, it, let's talk about first extended family and friends. Has that changed in any way? Um, With some probably, yeah. I don't feel like I'm necessarily as close with some, like I, as this, I may have been closer in the past or I, do, or I just don't feel like as comfortable around them anymore. I don't know. And do you think that's just right now because you're turning inward or that self-preservation? Prob- it could be. Yeah. Or because they don't, you don't feel like you, they're, they can relate to what you're. Probably a lot of that too. And they may feel like they can relate. But unless mm-hmm. you are me specifically, you cannot relate. Mm-hmm. Even you've lost a child, and but you can't specifically relate to me. No. And I can't specifically relate to you in your situation. Right. Um, so, yeah, unless you're personally me or you're God and actually know what I'm thinking, mm-hmm. you're not going to be able to. There's a commonality <laughs> amongst people that have lost children yeah. that can bind us together for sure. Yes, definitely. But because of your experience, because of the tragedy and how it happened— it creates a whole different set of, you know, circumstances that I Mm -hmm. can't relate to. Mm -hmm. And the same thing, like you just said, that's, you know, you can't relate to those types of things, but, um, have you found any of your friendships, like some of your close friendships to become more meaningful or do you feel like you're just trying to focus right now on your relationships within your own family? Um, there's a couple friends that I will go do things with, um, periodically. Um, and one more so that I didn't think as that I would be like having a better, like a more of a relationship Mm -hmm. with, um, that's more surprising. Um, but that's, it's good. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I really am trying to kind of like focus on my boys, especially Mm -hmm. like, cause I knew I'd be doing at the time anyways, like I was in therapy and I was still going through school like I am now. And I went back to work for a short period of time, but I was just like, there's no way I can do this and try to give the time that my boys need. So, um, yeah, just, I wanted to make sure I have as much time as possible that I can dedicate to my boys and to Blake as well. Mm -hmm. Um, because, it's a really crappy thing to go through and I want to be able to be a support if I can, even though there's probably some days that they're like, Oh, mom's just crying and whatever. And I can't do anything for him. I'm like, sorry. Like I just can't get myself to do anything. Okay. So we've talked about like friends and maybe extended family, but how has it changed the dynamic of your relationships within your family? How are you and Blake? Yeah. So how has it changed? You know, um, I don't know. Blake and I have always been, we're not always, but like, I feel like through the years that we've been together, we've gotten stronger, um, as a couple, cause we've been through certain things. Um, so, and he always like, since the accident happened, he said, I would 
he's like, I'm never, ever going to blame you for what happened. And he can say that all he wants, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I don't feel like he may like at some point be like, well, you're the one that Mm. ran over our daughter or like, I'm worried that my boys will do that later on and say that to me and like, just try to hurt me. Um, but I feel like right now our relationship is good. Um, I've, we don't always have every day is not perfect. Yeah. Um, but I feel like he understands when I need to just do nothing. Mm -hmm. And, um, I tried to do the same with him as well. Like if he just needs to just not do anything, take a nap or Mm -hmm. do whatever. Like, like I said before, we just try to give each other grace because mm-hmm. we do grieve differently. And, um, yeah, we, communication is a tough thing. And so, um, I think it's really important to try to be as open and honest as possible. And I feel like Blake and I do do that. And with my boys, like I said before, we, I just will tell them that like, if I'm missing Sunny, like I'm just like, I just really miss Sunny right now. Or, um, like I, like I said, I just will cry in front of them. Like they know that I'm not mm-hmm. like just happy and whatever all the time. They know that yeah. I, that I have bad days too. And I feel like that's important for them to know that I'm not like some psycho person. That's just like, Oh, I'm such a yeah. great person. And my daughter no, no, no. just died. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, um, have, what was my question on that one? As far as you and Blake goes, did you guys, because you know the statistics of people that lose children, mm-hmm. did their marriages don't always survive that. Yeah. Was that a conscious decision that you guys have talked about? Have You're aware of it. I know you're aware yeah. of it because it seemed like afterwards Blake was asking me all these questions about that. You know, and I'm like, oh, he's thinking about this. Like, this mm-hmm. is a worry you know, which it's a worry for all of us. Yeah. I was talking to another friend of ours who they lost their son. And he said that they consciously decided that whatever happens, we we're going to get through this together. Mm-hmm. And I, I was so like, I'm like, wow, you were so aware enough to have that thought. To, I wasn't that way. Uh, so have you guys talked about that? Have you, is that something that you've worried about or communicated together that, we're in this together. We're not, you know, the goal is to come out of this together and stronger than. Yeah. And like I've said before, my memory for conversations isn't always yeah. the best. So Blake usually wins in things because <laughs> he'll be like, oh, well, I remember it this way. I'm like, OK, yeah, you're probably right. But um, even though he may not be, you know, uh, but I feel like we did talk about it um, at one point and about like, uh, just, you know, trying to be each other's support and realize that like, (sighs) it's multiple people's fault that it occurred. Mm -hmm. I I know I put my self as the one to blame Mm -hmm. because I was driving the boat, but there were multiple adults Mm -hmm. that I don't know. Um, but Blake and I, we, we love each other and we've been through difficult things before. This is obviously the absolute worst thing, um, to have to go through together. But I believe that we want to stay together no matter what. And I think a lot of it is the fact that people, have brought it up to us multiple times. Like, Mm. Oh, well, you know, like people don't always stay together after a kid dies and everything. Maybe everybody's just warning you. Like they feel like they need to warn you, you know, like, Hey, this is something that you need to be aware of. Be careful of. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. And that's probably what it is. I don't know, you know, Mm. but, um, yeah. So that's probably why it's so much maybe in his mind. Um, because people bring it up, you know? Yeah. So, well, like, yeah, like you said, like, I don't know the exact statistics. I think Blake's probably looked them up before, but yeah. it's 
I think it used higher. to be higher than it, it used to be higher than it is now. This statistic. Oh, really? I think it's it's come down a little bit, but I think part of it is because before, let's just say, you know, two year or two decades ago or longer, they probably didn't talk the way that we talk now. They didn't yeah. utilize therapies True. the way they, when somebody would die, they would just stop talking about that person. And, mm-hmm. you know, there was a lot of things I think that contributed to that. Yeah. And I think that just in general, we have gotten better in that. So I think that that's helped bring that statistic down a little bit. Yeah. So, which is a really good thing because that's just another tragedy, you know, mm-hmm. on top of the loss already. Um, so let's talk about, you said that you kind of deal with anxiety and depression have, has this, um, created more anxiety in you and is that keeping you from participating in different activities or things that you would normally, um, well, probably like some social anxiety, just, I think a lot of it's like how you were saying before, I just don't want to be the center. Mm -hmm. I don't want people to be like, Oh, well, she's the one that that lost lost her her daughter and whatever. And so that's, kind of why I don't want I want to be around a bunch of people I mean I have been going to church and everything so there's that and maybe people still say that or whatever I don't even know everyone there's now because I feel like a bunch of people have moved yeah. into our congregation um that I don't even know now but you know what Camille it's really none of your business what people are thinking I know that's something that you don't have to worry about you've got enough to worry about than to worry about if somebody's saying when you leave, walk out of the room, oh, that's the lady that just lost her little daughter. Well, it's not even necessarily that. I just don't want people to come up to me. Oh, make it like, awkward and you have to yeah. like try to figure out Especially what to Especially if say. I don't really know them. Yeah. And like, like we went up to my sister's um, house a week and a half ago because her little daughter was getting baptized. And somebody that I like kind of knew that was like my sister's neighbor was coming up to me. I'm like, I don't really want to talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> like, just get me out of here. Yeah. 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 And then like somebody else random was coming up to talk to me and they're like, Oh, you're somebody's sister. And I'm like, yeah, I'm Jenny's sister. And then he like was saying something else. And I'm just like, yeah, I don't really want to talk to anybody today. And I just yeah. left. Like, yeah, I just, I and didn't want to. <laughs> you're allowed to do that. You're <laughs> like, totally I, allowed I to do, do that. It. Yeah. So yeah. He probably thinks I'm such a weirdo. But no. I'm no. like, I don't but know. you know what? You don't have to care what he thinks. Yeah. No, I know. I'm just like, <laughs> you know, whatever. Like, it doesn't matter what he thinks about you. You know, it's hard though too because at the same time, like, I don't want to like. I feel like I've come, so like beforehand, I always like was concerned about offending people to a degree, right? That's just how we are in general yeah. in society. Yeah. And but then like after the accident happened, I'm like, I don't care about anybody's feelings right now. Yeah. Like they can think whatever the heck they want. They can feel like that I offended them. Who cares? Mm -hmm. But now it's becoming more so that I like, oh, I don't want to like make them feel bad because I don't want to talk to them or whatever, you know, Mm -hmm. I, but at the same time, I'm just like, I can't, like, I can't do certain things. So like, I have to be okay with like, sorry, like if you feel like I'm offending you, like you're choosing to be offended because of that. Like you also have to understand that my daughter just died six months ago. So yeah. I think maybe, and I, I think I remember doing this once or twice where I had like this little standard thing I would say, like if somebody would ask me a question that I felt like, mm, I don't really want to talk to you about that. Mm-hmm. I would just say, Oh, thank you for your concern about me. And that's yeah. all I would say. I would just leave it like that. And it kind of oh, was like okay. awkward for a moment, but then they got them <laughs> without me having to say yeah. like, I'm not talking to you about this. You yeah. know, they would just be like, Oh, and then they would change the subject or because mm-hmm. You know, you don't want to make it feel bad, but at the same time, you're like, mm, I, if I start talking about it, I'm going to break down into a million pieces and this isn't the place to do that. Yeah. You exactly. know, so it's, it's kind of a self-preservation thing mm-hmm. that you have to do, but yeah, I totally get that. Um, how, so you just passed, you had your first Christmas with that sunny. Mm-hmm. How was that? Um, it was all right. We went up to Idaho to be with Blake's family for like five or six days and kind of like the annoying thing was like, oh, people were like, oh, what are you doing for, what are you doing for her? Like, are you going to go buy things? Like, are you going to put stuff in her stocking and like all this stuff? And I'm like, I honestly have no idea. Like, 
I haven't planned anything out yet. I'm just trying to I'm get just, through yeah, this. I'm just waking up for the <laughs> day by day and trying to get through the day. You You're know? thinking I'm planning like this huge thing, like to celebrate her at Christmas time and whatever. I'm just like, I don't even know. Like I haven't even thought about any of that kind of stuff. Like mm-hmm. I have no idea. Like, so I didn't. So then it kind of made me feel like a little bit bad. Like, like I should didn't I be doing plan this? it. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, eh, like whatever. Like I'm just trying to get through this. And so we buried Sunny in Idaho, mm-hmm. in Twin Falls, Idaho, where um, I have eight family members buried in that cemetery. So Sunny was the ninth of my mm-hmm. family members, and Blake has two family members buried in that cemetery. So that's the third on his side. Um, Sunny is and. Um, we hadn't seen her headstone yet. So we went Christmas Eve by ourselves. Mm-hmm. Um, so Blake's family lives in like Boise, Nampa area, which is a couple hours from where we buried Sunny. Mm-hmm. And he had sent a message out prior to be like, hey, we don't want, like, it's just going to be me, Blake, Tucker, and Dieter. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, no this one else. Our we don't personal want, own yeah, time it's our as a own family. Personal time yeah. together. Like, we haven't been out there. You guys can go out there. Yeah. Pretty much whenever you want, because it's only a couple hours away. Um, so we'd gone to church that morning because Christmas Eve was on a Sunday. Mm-hmm. And then we drove out there and just were in the cemetery for a little while hanging out. And I really didn't want to leave. I just wanted to stay there. Be there all day. Yeah. Her headstone's beautiful, by the yeah. way. I love it. It's perfect for her. Mm-hmm. Um, so... But then Tucker's like, I have to go to the bathroom. And of course it, it was like on a Sunday. So I'm like, don't have any bathrooms open yeah. around there. So we had to leave. But, um, and then we went to, they, in Twin Falls, they have a uh, Shoshone Falls and it's like in a canyon and mm. they have a path along that canyon that my grandparents that lived there, they used to walk around all the time and, um, they had a bench dedicated to them. So we walked out to that bench. Oh, cool. Um, that same day. So just kind of like trying to feel closer with Mm -hmm. um, family members that have passed and everything. And the sad part about the cemetery is that Sonny's actually buried around other children. Oh, really? Yeah. And I didn't realize that, you know, like the day of the funeral or whatever, or of the burial or whatever. Mm -hmm. But like when we went back, I was like, wow, like she's buried next to like a nine month old and like an eight year old and like a 20 year old. So I know not necessarily a kid, but like younger people. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, there's, and it's so hard for me. Cause I'm like, okay, there's so many young people that die. And it, like, I understand that, but like, it's just, and it's awful that all these people have to die. But until you have your own child die, it's just, it's just, I don't even know how to explain it. It's so much of a different feeling than, seeing other people's yeah. children die it's, yeah, or hearing about it yeah. or whatever. Does that bring you comfort knowing that she's buried around other kids? Or yeah. Was Cause it- I feel like she would be, she would like that. Yeah. Yeah. And so she's buried next to a Creek and she's not buried super far away from my other family members, but they didn't have any plots mm-hmm. right next to them. Um, and then we also have, we also bought two plots that when Blake and I die, we can be buried by her as well. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's just, it was really peaceful being there and Dieter was cleaning off other people's headstones that had dirt on it or whatever. So was, was it really snowing sweet. when you went? No. No, it wasn't snowing. Mm-hmm. So you didn't no have snow. all the It was snow, just so. freezing. Yeah. That's it was good. cold. It was like 35 degrees outside wow. and I was in a dress still. Oh gosh. <laughs> so do you, is that harder for you that Sunny's not buried here close by where you feel like you could go and visit or does that, that not a big um, factor in your well, after after we went to the cemetery I did tell Blake I'm like man I, maybe we should move to Twin Falls <laughs> yeah because it was it was really nice to be at the cemetery and to be close just to her. be there yeah yeah I think it's so interesting that um we just all experienced different things I hated leaving my son that day when I buried him mm-hmm It was just such an awful feeling knowing that I was going to put him in the ground and that's where he was going to stay, where his body was going to stay. Yeah. And I used to go a lot and I don't go as much now. I probably go twice a year now. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be, I needed to at first. That's why I asked that question. Like, is it, do you feel like it's been okay or is it, um, 
Do you wish that you were closer to? I, I do wish I was closer, yeah. but I knew that that's where she needed to be. Yeah. It was, was rare. Yeah. It gives you a good reason to go visit too, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And it, I'm sure it'll be a little bit different at, depending on the season. Now you need to go oh, in the yeah. spring and you need to go yeah, in the summer and exactly. see like what it's all, you know, like each time. But mm -hmm. um, it's it's comforting to know that there's a lot of family there too, I'm sure. And it's such a beautiful place. I, you don't think about that. Like when you go to, and you guys probably didn't see it because it was bought like out of state. So you didn't mm -hmm. get to go like pick out her plot, right? Uh -uh. Well, like the, my dad had, was figuring that part out. Yeah. Um, and had like contacted the cemetery and everything. And she had sent over like a paper of like plots and stuff. Mm -hmm. And like, he's like, Oh, it's going to be like right here. And like, there's the three plots right there. I'm like, perfect. Let's just do it. So that's, yeah. I want three plots right by each other. So, and then he's like, Oh, and it's by a Creek and whatever. I'm like, Oh, that's cool. But like, yeah, I didn't really understand. Yeah. Like, and I'd been to that cemetery before, but it'd been many years. So I didn't really understand like where it was at, but it's in a really, really nice spot that's in the nice. cemetery. Yeah, because there's all this, you know, they bring all this stuff, this information to you and you're like, oh my gosh, like, well, this one has a tree over here and this one has like these bushes, but there's a road that runs by this one. You're like, oh mm -hmm. my gosh, I never knew that it was so much into picking a oh, yeah. plot, you know, but there mm -hmm. is. So um, I'm glad that she's in a good place that you are comfortable with. Yeah. Um, let's see. What is, tell me, how has the loss of Sunny affected your life and just your immediate family. Um, What's been the hardest part other than just the day of the accident? The hardest part. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I'm asking this question for a reason because I think, and you made a comment about it earlier where people see you and they think that you're doing fine, mm -hmm. but they don't know what's happening on the inside. And I think that people think that we get over losing our children much sooner than we do. Yeah. So that's why I'm asking this question. Like, how has it changed or what would you want people to, to know the A that are experiencing or that somebody that hasn't experienced it, but are, you know, trying to support somebody that has, what do you want them to know about how it's changed your life? Well, going from three kids to two is quite a change. Mm -hmm. And she's just, She's so special. I hate not being able to give her hugs and kisses anymore. Yes, I have other children I can do that with, but it's I don't get to do it with her. her yeah. Um, just I think honestly, that's probably the hardest thing is just not to have her with me every day, not to be able to see her every day, and just be able to give her a hug or a kiss and ask her how her day was, and I would. I'd gotten into the habit of going into my kids' rooms after they had fallen asleep and give them a kiss on the forehead. So the fact that I can't do that for her anymore and mm -hmm. no one was in her room for at least a couple months after the fact, we just locked the door and people wouldn't go in there and um, until we decided that we needed to clean it out and get going on this podcast room and put her things in here and... um. There's just been, there's been a lot of hard things. It took us a long time. Like even after this room was all put together and painted, it took me a while to like get going as far as like, okay, we need to get furniture in here. We need to actually start interviewing people. Like this room was done in like September mm -hmm. and we didn't start interviewing anybody until November, November like the yeah. end of November. So some people may say that took a long time. Some people may say that took not very much time. You people probably think we're crazy even doing this. Um, but like I said, I try to do things that I think God wants me to do. Not necessarily because I think I need to do it or even because I want to do it because I don't like even today sitting yeah. down with you it's not necessarily for myself. I'm trying to share my experiences so that hopefully other people can learn from them and grow as an individual as well. And um, find hope, really. Yeah, and find hope and strength and maybe mm -hmm. some healing. But like I've, I've said to Blake, uh, it was probably a few months ago at least, 
um, I had, I was trying all these different things. I was going to EMDR. I was looking up things on certain medications and drugs and, um, all these different things. And, but I had the realization that like Christ is the only person that can truly heal me. Mm -hmm. And like we've talked about before, I don't know if I can truly ever be fully healed in this life from losing Sunny. Um, but, and I don't, and I feel like those therapies are helpful and I feel like there's different tools that are helpful and can aid in your healing process. But ultimately Christ is the only one that can heal you. Heal your heart. Yeah. Yeah. He's the only one. He, he, yeah, he's the only one that can truly heal you. And I try to remember that. And even though some days, at least a lot of the days too lately, don't feel like they're really very good. And even though I'm trying the things that I'm supposed to, or doing the things that I feel like I should be doing, it's holding on to those things. Like we talked about that mm-hmm. I know to be true and doing them regardless and things don't necessarily take, they're just not immediately great again. That's just not how it works, unfortunately. Right. And we have to learn and grow and that's what this life is all about. And unfortunately we had to have a daughter lose and we had to lose a daughter in this life. Mm -hmm. Have you ever wondered like, why me? Why us? Why? Oh yeah. 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 I, that, I've always found that interesting because I didn't have that. Oh, really? No, I was just kind of like, well, if not me, then it would be someone else, I think. Yeah. You know, not saying that, you know, a kid had to die or whatever, but I'm just saying I, maybe because I wouldn't want that to happen to anybody else. Mm -hmm. And so I just was always kind of like, you know, I guess, because that's what life is. It's full of experiences, good and bad. And Mm -hmm. I feel like I just got, the short straw on that one, you know, and I got the really bad, the really bad experience. And now, and you have too, yeah. you know, we're in this like club that is the worst club to be in, but you know, mm-hmm. so in regards to Sonny's loss, what are you most worried about for your family? Um, just, I just want to make sure we're giving the boys the help that they need. And it's hard because even just the other day, Tucker was saying that he didn't really want to talk to anybody about Sonny. Mm. Like ex- specifically the accident. So I know he's trying to shut that part out. Um, and maybe he isn't ready to talk about that kind of stuff. But I hope that in the near future, he'll come to me and be like, okay, I I realized that I need to do this or I don't know if I just need to have him go to see a trauma Mm. specialist and do that specifically, even though maybe he doesn't want to. I don't know. It's really hard because I want to make sure that I'm providing the right things for my my other children. Yeah. So And and maybe it's not a talk therapy or something. Maybe it's art therapy. Maybe Mm -hmm. it's like... um, equine therapy or something like that, you know, where they, there's so many different ways that for kids Mm -hmm. that you can help kids without actually having to talk about it, but they can work through those emotions. Do you, are you afraid of that you're going to lose another child? Has that been a fear? Yeah. Especially right after the fact, I'm like, please just like, I can't can't do another one. I can't, there's no way. Yeah. I, I, I really don't think I could. Yeah. I couldn't do it. Um, it's hard enough to lose one child. I don't know how people, cause I've known other people yeah. that have lost more than one child and I don't know, I don't know how they do it. Yeah. Um, but that hasn't been like a, something that's like a, a worry that continues to It was to more so it, it comes around every once in a little while, um, of like, wow, like, if I can lose a child one time, like what's it that it wouldn't happen again? And there was no warning or anything. Yeah, exactly. So just, no idea. It just came out of the blue. Our lives changed in the matter of minutes, mm-hmm. matter of minutes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, that's a very, very hard one for sure. Um, 
Let's see. I was thinking about how, you know, when we lose our kids, and we just talked about that, like we wouldn't be able to survive it. Mm -hmm. I've thought about that, that we are survivors. Yeah. Do you, can you see that there is going to be, can you see yourself being healed? Or can you see, do you have hope for what your future looks like for you and your family? I don't really know what our future is going to look like, honestly. Like you said, I'm kind of just trying to get through the days. I know I'm going to finish school here in October, and then I have no idea what's going to happen after that. I honestly have no idea. And I've always been like a huge planner, like day-to-day planning things. And I still like will put stuff on my calendar. It's not like I don't ever plan anymore, but I don't feel like I'm as much of a planner as I used to be because I'm like, there is a point obviously to plan things, Mm -hmm. but at the same time, it's like, what's the point? Yeah. Like, well, and right I now you're just with trying my to survive whole it. family yeah. for until I die. Yeah. And then that was the plan, right? Yeah, exactly. Even I died before Blake. That was the whole plan too. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, obviously I couldn't plan it out that way. I yeah. just, in your would, mind, in that's my mind, the plan. Like, that's, yeah. I'm yeah. Like, Hopefully I die before him. That way I don't have to deal with anything when, but obviously that's also like super selfish too, because it's like, I don't want to have to deal with those things. And like, I have felt that I don't even care if like God killed me tomorrow. Like if I died tomorrow, I'd be fine with that. But at the same time, I would not be fine with that because I know that'd be so hard on my family. Yeah. And so it's like, okay, fine. I will sacrifice being here and suffering through this loss just so that my kids don't have to suffer through another loss. Yeah. And that Blake doesn't have to suffer through another loss because it's hard. Have you had thoughts of that where you just don't want to be here anymore and oh yeah or any self-harm thoughts or anything not that I would go do anything to myself um but like I said I like I would be fine if like God was like oh well yeah. you got you're gonna get sick and die in the next month okay sure I'll be sick yeah. for a month that's nothing like you know or whatever but um but like I said I think right now in my life I I would be more worried about my boys and Blake, if I, if something happened to me, mm-hmm. because I don't want them to have, and to they can't worry handle about, another no, tragedy either. I don't think yeah. so. Yeah. Um, so. have you found, and maybe it's too soon yet for you, but have you found that, um, certain things just don't like matter anymore? I, I remember being oh, like yeah. kind of a micromanager. Like I was kind of a control freak in my house and mm-hmm. my kids had to do certain things. And so, and then like the rooms had to be clean or whatever, you know, just different things. And then after my son died, I was like, who cares if their room's a mess? You know, like, you don't want to eat dinner? Don't eat dinner. I don't, you want to have, you know, Pop Tarts for breakfast or Twinkies for breakfast? I don't care. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I just like, some things just, you know, don't matter. And let me take that back. Pop Tarts were like a, that was a breakfast in our house. (laughs) (laughs) My kids would be like, mom used to throw Pop Tarts at us all the time, but like Twinkies or cake or something like that. Like, I was, I don't care. You don't want to eat breakfast? I don't even care. But, um, have have you noticed that some of that has changed where you're just like, there's just some things that aren't even worth, you know, yeah, worrying about anymore or your perspective shifts, I think. Yeah, I think same kind of thing because I also like kind of micro manage a little bit in my house because I like things to be clean mm-hmm. and orderly because it's like, okay, well, how can you find anything that you're looking for if it's just a huge mess? That was something that Sunny was, her room was just always a mess. I'm like, Sunny, like you got to pick up your clothes and whatever. She was funny in that way and would organize things that didn't really make sense in the way that she would organize Mm -hmm. them. Um, But uh, she, or sorry, the, that's distracting me right now. I don't know why he opened and closed it when he already had the car. (laughs) Maybe he forgot. (laughs) Um. I can't, what was it? So we were just talking about like our perspective shifts. Oh, yeah. Of like, you yeah. Know? Well, and it's hard too because it's also like, okay, my kids are also grieving. I also need to give them grace. I don't want to be so difficult for them when they're also trying to grieve. Like Tucker's room is just so messy all the time. And like, I don't know, he like will make his bed 
And then it looks like a psycho has like slept in his bed. Like it's just a complete mess the next day. I'm like, how's it even possible? And I'm like, can you just make your bed please? Or like pick up your clothes off the ground and, or whatever. And like, even if he doesn't do it, I'm just like, ugh, like, I don't even know. Like normally before, like I would be like, Tucker, you need to do this and this and this before you can do this or whatever. Mm-hmm. And now I'm just like, eh. Yeah. Like I just, I don't even know if I have the energy necessarily to fight. Yeah, that's true. Or whatever. I'm just like, eh. You know, I think for me, part of it was that I found peace in knowing that my house was clean or that things were, you know, where they needed to be or whatever. And then after the accident, peace was gone. Mm -hmm. And so I, I just felt like I needed to find peace in a different way, you know? And so part of that, I just like, like, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't. And I probably went a little too far on the other end of the spectrum, to be honest, you know, but yeah, it just, some things just don't matter. So yeah. I, I wondered if you like, you know, what your concern was for your family as a, you know, you give, I guess my point is, is that we think our kids are okay. Mm-hmm. And then in a couple of years, it may raise its, you know, you may have this, you, you think they're doing fine. But and then don't be surprised if in a couple of years it comes back up and they're now dealing with it that you thought that they had already gone through. Yeah. And it, it just may, and it, it can happen for you too. You mm-hmm. know, anyone really can go through that where you think you're, you think you're dealing with it pretty good. And then all of a sudden something comes up and you know, it's like a trigger or you realize that you really didn't deal with something that you thought you dealt with. And, you know, just know that that's a possibility that, you know, and it's hard because, I remember feeling like sorrow was my constant companion. And I imagine that's probably where you're at now, where you just, it's just with you all the time. It's there all the time. Mm -hmm. And I remember writing, I I wrote this thing about that sorrow was just this companion that just wouldn't leave me. And how can I, how can I get away from that? (laughs) And it takes a lot of time. And then it changes a little bit. And I think that sorrow becomes an old friend that comes to visit. Hmm. You know, it yeah. kind of shifts a little bit as you get through it. You're way too soon. But I mean, you know, much later, hopefully it will be come an old friend that every once in a while will pop in and say, oh, and you'll be like, oh, there you are. You know, let me visit with you for a little bit and then go back to where you came from, you know. And that's just kind of a that's kind of how it has worked out for me where I've just Give into those moments and then, you know, okay, go back to where you came from and, you know, we'll move on and still try to have joy in our life. So you said you can't really see that you're, what your life is going to be like in the future, but do you see that there's peace or that there's joy to still be had? I don't really know. I mean, people tell us those things, but... And I, I do have hope that I can have that peace and joy like I have felt before. Um, but I don't know if I necessarily see it. I just hope for it. Yeah. And that it's, um, I don't want to sound that like cliche thingy, you know, where it's like, oh, but Sunny would want you to, you know, because Sunny was such a light. Mm-hmm. She wants you to f- feel joy, you know, and she was so yeah. full of love. Um that I could imagine that that would be a great thing for her, you know? Yeah. Um, there's, Oh, so my other thing was, uh, Sunny's birthday is coming up. Yeah. In a couple of weeks. How are you guys going to celebrate her first birthday? Or do you um, have a plan? I don't know for sure yet. I have mm-hmm. class that day, but I'm not going. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good day. It's a good yeah. reason to take off class. Um, I do have to do a rotation that day at the hospital, but it is just to do newborn exams. Mm. So I'm like, I can do that because I like babies yeah. and Sunny loves babies. So, and I feel like I can be almost closer to her because babies are just from heaven. Mm-hmm. So I think it will be hopefully a good experience. The fact that it, had to be on that day specifically. You'd take it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it's not like I'm not going to be there for like the whole day or whatever. It's, it'll be like a, a max a couple hours. So it's mm-hmm. not even part, a ton of the day. I haven't decided if 
I mean, I haven't even asked Tucker if he wants to go to school that day. Um, I did ask him what we should do and he wants to make a, uh, like purple or pink cake. And, um, then I was talking to Dieter about it and we're going to do like a confetti cake. And he's like, well, we're, are we going to eat it? I'm like, well, yeah, we'll eat it. Like, <laughs> so, and I am going to get the boys, um, a couple of pillows with a picture. So I'll, for each of them, I'll have a pillow of, them with Sunny, like a picture of them with Sunny on their pillow. Oh, cool. Um, I'm going to give it to them on, on her, her birthday. birthday. Oh, that'll be special. Yeah. So um, I need to figure out, I mean, the, I'm going to go about the like a sneakily way and be like, hey, what picture do you like the most of you and Sunny mm-hmm. together and stuff? And then I'll get them pillows because I think I'm going to want to give them something on her birthday every year. Yeah. So at least those two things. I don't know for sure what else we're going to do. Um, I haven't really figured it out yet, but, yeah, but just those. something to honor mm-hmm. her. And yeah, yeah. I had somebody tell me once that, um, because on my son's birthday, we, I don't bake a cake. I don't mm-hmm. do that. We used to do his birthday is December 23rd. Yeah. So we used to always use it as like a day of service and we would go and find things that we would do or whatever. And somebody told me that they, it, it was a family member, but they said something like, well, you don't even bake a cake or you don't even do. And I was like, it really hurt my feelings because I thought, well, just because, because they had had a loss in their family mm-hmm. and they were like, well, we always do a cake or we let balloons go or we, you know, whatever. And it really hurt my feelings because I thought just because I don't do the same thing that you do doesn't make my day any less important to me exactly. or, you know, it was almost like they were dismissing it because I wasn't making this big to do out of it. Mm -hmm. So they didn't need to come to a family event because, you know, I wasn't doing what they thought that I should be doing. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I just wondered if you were going to, you know, cause we all do it. We all do it different. You know, if you don't feel like baking a cake, don't bake a cake. You Mm -hmm. know, (laughs) if you, if that's what your kids want, then do it, you know, whatever. But you get to choose how you do that day and her anniversary date. Mm -hmm. That may be another date that is, becomes a, um, meaningful day for your family. Our family is always together on that day, usually both of those days. And we usually go to his favorite restaurant or do something like that. So Mm -hmm. you just get to decide, you know, whether it's you do a family activity or, you know, whatever. Um, I think you said that you don't think you're ever going to go on the boat again. Yeah. Is that kind of how you're feeling still? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That would just be too hard. Yeah. 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 What about, um, is there any blessings that you felt like have come out of this experience or anything that's special or meaningful to you that you've learned or since Sunny's passing? Um, I don't know. That's kind of a loaded question there Mm -hmm. for me. Um, I've seen like little things, right? Like, um, it brought back my brother and his now fiance together. Oh, so I think I met her. Probably was she, she was at the funeral. Did she help do the video? Mm-hmm. Okay, I did meet her. Yeah, yeah, because I, I mean, Sunny loved her so much, and they had a good relationship, and so like I had to let her know that yeah. Sunny passed away and everything, and so I feel like had that not happened, they wouldn't be where they are now Mm -hmm. right getting married in the next few months or whatever that's fantastic so and I know that's kind of a hard thing be like really like you you that had to happen for you guys to get together you know and maybe maybe they would have gotten together eventually because of that but I don't Mm -hmm. think they had really talked you know since they had split up um before then is that hard for you to find like happiness in that or are you happy that 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 this um, event with Sunny, this passing with Sunny, brought them together? Does that bring happiness to you, or or do you I feel like I'm, it's this or that kind of thing? I think I'm kind of just like indifferent about it. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I'm just like, eh, like that's like I'm glad, but at the same time, it's just like, eh, I don't know. You just don't have the excitement in you that you just don't have yeah, to give. I'm right trying now. to be though. Yeah, I'm but trying you just to, don't have to give, and I'm that's trying. okay. Yeah. 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 And then, um, I don't know. Uh, I mean, we obviously wouldn't be doing this now had she not passed away. Yeah. So 
if this hadn't, or if she hadn't passed, we wouldn't be here and have converted this room, spent all this time and uh, resources to make this happen and be able to help people. Mm -hmm. Um, And really, like, I really hope it helps a lot of people. That's because I, like I said, like Blake and I are doing this because we feel like God is wanting us to do this. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we had to lose a child to be able to do this. You, I don't feel like you could have people interview you unless they've had a similar experience happen Mm -hmm. to you. That's why I wanted you to come interview Blake Blake and myself Mm -hmm. because somebody else had offered and I was like, no, that's not, that doesn't feel right. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Christy, Christy is the one. Um, Cause I just, I don't feel like you can, like, like I said earlier, like you can't completely relate to somebody because everyone's experience is different and every person is different, but you can relate to them to a degree because yeah. you also lost a You've child. Experienced something similar. Yeah. So, and if this is how God is wanting us to help others in this life, then it's something that we have to suck it up and do. It's unfortunately. a sacrifice. It You're is. making a sacrifice. It is. And that I, I, uh, recognize that mm-hmm. that it is a sacrifice to do this at the same time that you're grieving, you know. Yeah. So, and I think you're you are going to help a lot of people for sure. Yeah. Um, are you able to see like little moments of like God's hand in your life? You know. Yeah, I usually will write them down just because, like I said, my memory is awful. Yeah. Um, I know, like right when we were planning all the funeral and everything, the fact that. Um, we were able to have somebody that we know make her the casket. That's perfect. It was perfect. Yeah. The fact that Blake has friends from, um, a mission that he served that are musically talented, be able to help be a part of her funeral and perform songs that she loves. Mm -hmm. Um, like those are just little tender mercies, um, like her funeral was absolutely perfect in my opinion. Yeah, it was great. Um, and it, and the fact that we just had so many people that were willing to sacrifice their time and their resources to help it be so beautiful and to bring us meals every day for however many days it was. And, um, take my boys and go do things with them so that we didn't have to worry about them. And I think that is also many blessings as well that I've seen from it. Um, obviously those blessings didn't need to happen. Right. You wish, you wish they didn't have to happen, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 But I am grateful that they did happen and we've had tons of people, um, write us letters and message us and, um, just do little things for us here and there and send us things. And um, yeah, it's just, it's good. I mean, I, I do appreciate those things yeah. for sure. Well, I can tell you that the reason so many people helped you is because so many people love you. And I will, and I wanted to say this at the beginning, but I, I'll say it now. The reason that you had a family on the boat with you that you didn't know very well is because you and Blake are so good about inviting people to do things with them, to do things with you guys. Um, You've just, that's a gift that you have that I don't think a lot of people can do. And I just am always amazed by, I remember when you invited us to go out, (laughs) you had sent us a text message and Uh said, hey, do you guys want to go out to dinner with us? And I was like, was this for me? <laughs> Are you asking me? And this was, you know, a couple of years ago, but I mean, yeah. I'm like, my daughter's your age. And so I was like, why do you want to go to a dinner with us old people? You know? And of course, Matt, the opposite. He's yeah. like, this is fantastic. I feel like I'm in my thirties. You know, like, I was like, oh my gosh, That's Matt. So funny. But, um, so 
that's why if somebody's at the beginning of the podcast, they're listening to this and they're saying, well, why would they have a family with them that they hardly knew? Mm -hmm. That's why, because you're so good about inviting people to go do things and then experience like you had us out on the boat with you, you know, Mm -hmm. and you didn't know us very well. And that's a normal thing for you guys. Yeah. So that's why that, in case that didn't make sense to anybody, (laughs) that's why. (laughs) Um, But the reason that so many people helped you is because they love your family so much because you've, you've touched a lot of people and you bring a lot of people together, Mm -hmm. you know, and here you're doing it again in a different way. You're bringing a lot of people together, you know? So that's a great thing about you. Um, so as we wrap this up, I think, tell me, is there something about Sunny or this experience that you want people to know about? that we didn't talk about? Mm. I don't know. It's just, it's really hard. It's Losing the kid is really tough. It's really hard. And I do want people to know that maybe listening that Unfortunately, bad things happen to every single person on this earth. Mm-hmm. Not just good people, not just bad people, but to every single person on this earth. And it's how we decide to take it and react to what happens to us. Um, that's what God is looking at. And not saying that he's the one that caused the accident. Right. Because I feel like Satan's the one that brings a lot of the evil into the world or he does bring all the evil into the world. And, um, God just, you know, he loves us and he wants what's best for us and he wants us to learn and to grow. And, um, yeah, I just, I really think that unfortunately every single person has to be dealt a bad hand every now and then. And, our hand, our bad hand is right now, but we're trying to make the most of it and trying to move forward, even though, as I've talked about, it's really rough and I have bad days, but ultimately it's, how does God look at you and how are you, how's your relationship with Jesus Christ and are you utilizing him and are you going to him for help when when bad things happen or are you turning to alcohol and drugs or other things that aren't really going to be helpful that just mask the things that are, that are troubling you. So ultimately I just, I guess I want people to know that they should turn to God for all things. Even if it's, even if you may be angry at God because of something, God, God loves you. Mm -hmm. He, he loves he loves everybody so much. I have felt his love. I know it. So. I think that's a beautiful message of hope that you're giving people, for sure. Now, let's talk about the people that are listening that haven't experienced loss. Is there something that you would want them to know? How can they be a support? or how can? Because I've had a lot of people reach out to me mm-hmm. and say... I'm so glad you talked about that because I didn't know about that or this helps me help, you know, my family member that's been going through this or now I know what I, some of the things I should do or shouldn't do. So is there something that you would want people that are on the support side of it yeah, or that are listening to this just to learn, Mm -hmm. just to learn more? Is there something that you would want them to know? I think just realize that they shouldn't ever be offended by anything that we may do or say because we're just trying to figure out how to go through our days. How to live your life without your child. Exactly. So Mm -hmm. anything I may do or say to somebody or not do, I'm not trying to hurt them in any way. I, I am just trying to do what's what I think is best for me and trying to just go utilize the people that I know best and have the best relationships with, um, or the use that utilize the best tools that I know how to do. So yeah, I think it would be 
just that don't, don't choose to be offended by anything that I might do or not do. Give you grace. Yeah, give you, me grace. Nobody, nobody gives you a book on how to deal with this and you're just exactly trying, trying to figure, to figure, it, figure out. it out. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. That's good. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. I think we forget about that sometimes. Okay, well, again, thank you for including me on this. I feel really I'm honored that you asked me to help with this tender conversation. Mm-hmm. And thank you for opening up to me and sharing this with everyone. Um, it's really special. I'm praying for you. I'm praying that you, thank you continue to heal and that you guys continue to do the good work that you're doing. So yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thanks for joining us on the Lost Child Podcast. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe. And remember, shine bright and we'll see you in the next episode.